All right, now let's look at some actual equations of ellipses. So these equations are in general form. So general form right, right up here. And uh, the way that they're written on your flow chart, of course, is that they're in standard form. And here are a couple questions. If I just have my equations written like that, how could I just look at them and be able to tell that these things are ellipses? And the second one is, am I also able to tell if our major axis is a vertical one or a horizontal one? And the answer to both of these, well, we can get the answer to both of these questions just by looking at without even having to do some algebra. So first of all, notice that I, this is quadratic in both x's and y's. Both of these equations are. So, so from the x squared terms, Using my properties from algebra, I know that it has to have two zeros on the x-axis. From my y-squared term, it has to have two zeros on the y-axis. So I have two zeros on the x-axis, I have two zeros on the y-axis. Take a look at the pictures. This is one of the ways that I can connect these points. That if I make myself an ellipse, it connects the two points and have two zeros on the x-axis and two zeros on the y-axis for both of these pictures. Okay. Furthermore, I can tell which of these has a vertical, ma uh, a vertical major axis or a horizontal major axis. Look at the one on the left hand side. The one on the left hand side has a vertical major axis. Now look at the equation here. The vertical one is the y squared and it has a 4 and that 4 is smaller than the 9. Okay, let's look over here at the second one. The second one has a horizontal major axis which goes with the x. And the x squared has a coefficient of 1, and the y squared has a coefficient of 4. So the horizontal one had the smaller coefficient. And that's always what's going to happen. So that's right here. Whichever quadratic term has the smaller coefficient, that's the one that's going to have the major axis, the longer axis. And you're going to see why that has to be in just a little bit whenever we put these things into standard form. Also, in terms of SRT transformations, the x on this is not actually scaled by 9. It would be scaled by the reciprocal of that 1 ninth. And this y squared is not scaled by 4. It's actually scaled by 1 fourth. And that's another reason why the smaller one is going to get the longer axis, the smaller coefficient. OK, here's a follow-up question. How can I just look at these two equations and know that the one on the left is an ellipse and the one on the right is a circle? think that you probably can see this pretty easily. The reason why is, again, the x squared means I have two zeros on the x-axis. The y squared means I have two zeros on the y-axis. But they're also scaled by the same number. The x squared and the y squared have the same coefficient. And that's going to indicate that this thing is going to be a circle instead of an ellipse. So things like that are just looking at the equation. I can get some information from it. OK. So here the three steps that you use to take a general elliptical equation and put it into standard form. So step number one, you're going to group your x's and your y's together and get rid of the constant. By get rid of the constant, I mean take it and put it on the opposite side of the equation. Now, I'm going to complete the square twice. I have to complete the squares with the x's separately from completing the squares with a y. And remember, whatever you add to the left-hand side of the equation, you're going to have to add to the right-hand side of the equation. And then finally, whatever your constant value ends up being on the right side of the equation, divide both sides by it. And that's going to leave you with 1 on the right side of the equation, which is what we want for standard form. So let's apply these three steps right here and put this equation into standard form. So identify this as a circle or an ellipse. Let's take a look. I have a 9y squared and I have a 4y squared. This means that this is going to be an ellipse because they have different coefficients. And since the y squared has the smaller coefficient, it's going to get the longer axis. y squared is vertical, so this has a vertical major axis. Okay, just, just by looking at the equation without doing any math yet. Now we're going to separate the x's from the y's and then put the constant on the right hand side. So I'm going to have 9x squared 
minus 54x plus, and then I have my y squared term, so 4y squared plus 8y is equal to, I'm going to take the 49, I'm going to subtract it over here, so minus 49. Okay, I'm going to have to complete the square on the x's, and I have to complete the square on the y's separately. In order to complete the square, the leading coefficient of it has to be a 1. So I'm going to have to factor out of the 9 just from those x terms. So 9 parentheses x squared minus 6x plus blank to complete the square. And then do the same thing with this 4 here. I'm going to have to factor that out of the y terms. So plus 4 times y squared plus 2y plus another blank to complete the square on the y's. It's equal to negative 49 plus blank plus blank. And those correspond to the two blanks that I complete the square with on the x's and y's. So let's complete them. So half of negative 6 is 3. Squaring that is 9. So I have to add a 9 to this side. Half of this middle term, 2, is 1. Square it, I get 1. I have to add a 1 to this side. Right? Ooh, that's wrong. Because remember, over here, I didn't just add 9. I have to distribute this 9 to it. So 9 times 9 is actually 81. I have to add an 81 to that side. Oops. Same thing here. I didn't add a, a 1 to the left-hand side. I added 4 times 1. I added a 4. So that is a very common mistake that I just made for your benefit. OK, so let's clean this up. I have 9 times x minus 3 squared plus 4 times y plus 1 squared is equal to. All right, and I total all of these up. I've got 85 subtract 49, 85 subtract 49. I borrow the 1, that's a 6, a 7, it's a 36, 36. OK, what was the last step? Last step was to get rid of this constant here, divide both sides by 36. Divide by 36, and I get, if I divide all this by 36, the 9 over the 36 is going to simplify, and it's going to leave me with x minus 3 squared over 4. Plus, now the 4 over the 36 is going to simplify to 1 9th. So that's going to be y plus 1 squared over 9 is equal to 36 divided by 36 is 1. And there's my equation in standard form. Let me switch colors here and let's get all the other information that we need from it. So, separate this stuff. First of all, my center point, that's the easy one. So the center point is pretty much given to me and these two points are lying to me. So it's a 3 comma negative 1 for the center point. What's my a value? My a value is the bigger number. This is actually a squared. The 9 is a squared. So a is equal to 3. My b, so this 4 is equal to my b squared. My b is equal to 2. And then let's go ahead and do the math in order to find my c. So my c, using the anti-Pythagorean theorem, is c is equal to the square root of a squared, so that's a 9, minus b squared minus 4, which is, I made that a little too long, the square root of 5. So now let's find all of the other points. Let's find, um, let's see, the the vertices. So the vertices, since this is a vertical major axis, the vertices are going to go up and down from the center point. So vertices up and down from the center point, that's going to change the y coordinate. So the 3 will stay the same, the x will stay the same. And now I take my 3 and add it and subtract it from the y coordinate here. So if I subtract it, I get a negative 4. And if I add it to it, Let's see, I have 3, uh, comma 2. Okay. Now, my uh, foci are also up and down. Again, this is going to go on uh, the y coordinates. So my foci, 3 will stay the same. And since this is irrational, let's just start with negative 1, plus or minus the 5. 
and then my covertices this time is going to go left and right because this is associated with the x's so the covertices this time I'm taking my b adding it and subtracting it from the 3 so if I subtract it from the 3 I'm at 1 negative 1 and if I add it I'm at 5 negative 1 so there's all the information that we can get from that equation. Ta-da!